Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. We're going to be reacting to another cut video today. And this one is about Democrats and Republicans. And I know that we all have fun laughing at like the silly like dating ones and that kind of thing. But I think that the videos that The Cut does and Jubilee does showing the differences between Democrats and Republicans and like trying to get them to find common ground, those types of episodes, I think that they're really, really important because even though they are often edited with a certain bias. What? I think that in the end, you usually see that we are a lot more similar than the media paints us to be and that there's a lot of humanity in these conversations. Like people are able to laugh and they're able to find common ground. So I've actually never watched this series before. This is a side by side. Will Democrats and Republicans actually agree on anything? So I'm excited because I never know when I start watching these. Before we dive into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Here we go. We're starting off with a hot one. So I can already see it on my screen, BLM. Black lives matter, all lives matter. Black lives matter. Oof. I guess all lives matter. Why is that? Because I feel like my life matters too. <laughs> and I'm not black. I reacted to a video the other day with that same pastor. In this video, he does not have his gay pin on, but he did have it on in the other one. Hi there. Hello there. I'm Ryan, and I'm a Republican. And I'm a Republican. I am a Democrat. And I'm oh, a Democrat. he does. Love is love. There it is. I am part of the Democratic Party. What are some stereotypes about Republicans? We're all old, rich, white guys. Southerners, uneducated. That's my least favorite thing. I remember being at UCLA, and I had a couple of friends who, because I was from the South, assumed that my family was made up of slave owners because I have grandparents in North Carolina and just automatically assumed that I was like a raging racist. Meanwhile, my friend group was literally comprised of like two white people and then everybody else was like very ethnically diverse. And I was like, I'm literally sitting in your apartment right now and we've been friends for over a year. I think if I was a racist, you would know by now. Anyway. Non-inclusive. Probably doesn't like different people. They're like hyper-religious and just really hateful. Like <gasps> what do you think Republicans said are stereotypes about Democrats? We don't have a backbone. We don't want to work for anything. We're communists. They want to turn the country into a dictatorship. I mean, you've kind of already done that. That's the thing. Some of these things have already happened. Party of diversity. Interestingly enough, the majority of the, of the Democratic Party is still white. What's something you find annoying about Republicans? I feel like Republicans just kind of think they're right and they don't really want to listen to what anyone else has to say. Okay, but yes, I do think I'm right. But also, you also think you're right and you don't want to listen to anything that anybody else has to say. That's why we get canceled and we get doxxed rather than actually listening to our opinions. I think that's just like an all of us problem. A lot of Republicans tell me I am not a real Christian because I vote Democrat and because I am pro-choice. My political affiliation has nothing to do with my faith. Maybe it should. What do you find annoying about Democrats? They have a way of expressing their concerns on a more obvious ways, protesting, marches, and so on. I actually don't care. Like, that's not something that annoys me. When the protests become riots and then they're not held accountable for those, that's annoying. But, I mean, we have freedom of speech. Like, you have the right to assemble and have a protest. If you want to protest, that's your prerogative. We protest, you guys protest, it does not matter. It's a free country. We should all be grateful that we are able to protest. So I don't have an issue with that. But I do have an issue when you are burning down cities, blowing up cars, you know, tearing into small businesses, ruining lives, and then you go on TV and say, this is such a beautiful, beautiful, like, memorial and, like, candlelit vigil. It's like, no, you were burning down a city and you should be held accountable. Me being a brown woman, I feel like they're really good at, like, acting like they care. They're not doing anything for me. So I'd say it's better, like, be honest. If you say you care about me and my people, actually do something. I mean, yes, that's why we all make fun of the white liberals that claim that they are so anti-racist, but they actually often end up being very racist. And they say, you need to vote. You know, you're not black if you don't vote for me. And if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. Really? Is that anti-racist to you? Do you think that, a, you know, a person of color cannot think a different way? It's like, okay. Do your best impersonation of a Republican. <laughs> That's literally the opposite. It's like the embodiment of the left can't meme. 
Oh, I guess he was trying to do below the nose. That was actually, okay, yeah, never mind. You can meme. That's actually funny. I got the like two layered masks and I would cut out the filter layer because I wanted, because I worked at Trader Joe's and so I was working really, really long shifts every day. I would work like eight or nine hour shifts with customers and I would be sweating my brains out. So I would just cut out the back part so I could breathe. I think I still have some of those. I was worried about taking them on planes because I never knew if they would get caught. And then one day I was brave enough to do that. And then I was like, oh, this is great. And then I just stopped wearing them in the airports and I would get major stank face. But it felt really good. Like I kind of miss that. I kind of miss walking through an airport in like the heat of COVID without a mask on. People just being like, it was great. It was really empowering. You guys should try it sometime. <laughs> We'd have some like boots. Definitely not Doc Martens. Those are democratic boots. I love my Doc Martens. No, stop it. That's stupid. The Republican <laughs> boots or the cowboy boots? Do your I have both of them. Thank you very much. Best impersonation of a Democrat. I would need tighter pants to really uh, get the hipster look going. So have you been boosted? Take your COVID shot. <laughs> we must ban assault weapons right now. That was the best commitment I've seen all day. That was good. That was great. It's kinkier. Oh. Kinkier. Democrats. Republicans tend to have a more conservative point of view. I would say Republicans. There's something about those like church girls and like the conservative people that when their world is open, they get down. Well, <clears throat> if you guys remember correctly, I did an episode last month about how monogamy is now kinky. And I know conservatives like traditional values and like monogamy, so just saying. Who's kinky now? That's so terrible, it's gonna be memed. I'd say the Republicans because it's always the nice seeming people who are the freakiest. Democrats. Why do you say that? They're very open, it's not vanilla. Have you ever had sex with someone of your opposing party? Yes. How was it? That man looks like he saw God, maybe, I don't know. Like he's like. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Have you ever had sex with someone of the opposing party? Yes. Like afterwards, they were very like shameful of it. I kind of understand because they were um, religious, but like the act itself wasn't bad. <laughs> Who's more problematic? Democrats. Democrats. The leadership of the Democratic Party, Democratic voters themselves, I wouldn't say that's the case. That's a very like balanced take. Because I think when you actually go out in the real world and you talk to people, like obviously there are extremes, but normal people who are voting, they are often misled. There are extremes on both sides, but I think that we can actually find a lot more common ground than the media, you know, leads us to believe. But there are extremes that are, you know, running our corporations that are leading the country right now, and they are probably the most problematic. I'd say that they are more problematic than the voters, because I think a lot of voters are just kind of blindly following. Not to say that there are not problematic voters, but I think a lot of people are just misled. They haven't asked the important question yet of whether Democrats or Republicans are dog people or cat people. Obviously, I think we're dog people, which is why I love working with Rough Greens. Naturopathic Dr. Dennis Black, the founder of Rough Greens, is focused on improving the health of every dog in America. And we all know this by now, probably because I tell you this almost every single day, but traditional dog food, traditional kibble is not the most nutritious option for your dog. You need Rough Greens to boost your dog's food back to life. Rough Greens is a supplement that contains all the necessary vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils, digestive enzymes, and antioxidants that your dog needs every single day. And things that I can guarantee are not in your conventional kibble. And the best part about Rough Greens is that because it's a supplement, you do not need to go out and break the bank trying to buy some fancy new raw dog food. You can just sprinkle Rough Greens on their food every single day. Dog owners everywhere are raving about Rough Greens. It supports healthy joints, improves bad breath, boosts energy levels, and so much more. We are what we eat, and that obviously goes for dogs too. Rocky and Tater love Rough Greens. They have been eating them for the last three or four months or so, and I cannot endorse them more. The team at Rough Greens is so confident that their products will improve your dog's health that they are offering my viewers a free Jumpstart trial bag so that your dog can try it too. A free Jumpstart trial bag can be at your door in just a few business days. Go to freeroughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG. Again, that is freeroughgreens.com slash Brett or call 877-66-MY-DOG today. I actually think the Democrats would argue that they're dog people, but I, I think they're, they're that, they have to be cat people. They do. I think there's a certain Democrat dog breed, but dogs are the Republicans for sure. What the Democrats said? Oh, they definitely said conservatives, especially after Trump. Well, she was a spicy man. But I mean, freedom of speech. Republicans. Just because storming the Capitol has never crossed the Democratic Party's mind ever. Oh, really? Really? When you wanted to riot when Roe v. Wade was overturned? When literally anything doesn't go your way? What about when you had the San Francisco City Hall on fire for months on end? I think Portland City Hall was on fire 
for even longer than that. It wasn't the U.S. Capitol, but you certainly had stormed some capitals. Just saying. Both. <laughs> I don't think either group is problematic. I think the extremes of both ends are problematic. We lock ourselves in and paint the other as the extreme. And I think, how do we have conversations? How do we that is see a good point. the humanness of the other person? Black lives matter or all lives matter? Black lives matter. I guess all lives matter. Why is that? Because I feel like my life matters too. Very valid point. Should not be controversial at all. It's not even a thing of people don't understand the whole Black Lives Matter thing. It's they don't want to admit that they understand. If I was to choose between the two, I'd say all lives matter. It's just way too encompassing the term. It's the same thing with Black Lives Matter. I believe in general most that Black Lives Matter, but do I believe that Black zoocetists lives matter or black pedophile lives matter no. also there's a big difference between the statement black lives matter because obviously i believe that black lives matter do i support the organization absolutely not do i agree with what the organization stands for and what that movement stood for no i do not i absolutely disagree with that i also believe that all lives matter that's why i inherently believe that black people's lives do matter so it's, a, it's very difficult to ask that question because I think that they are two very, very different things. One is just a statement that a normal empathetic person who is not a racist could agree with. And the other is a very, very toxic, politicized organization that pretends like it's not political, pretends like it's just this amazing, loving, sweet, we just want everybody to be happy and equal and safe. And then also they're like embezzling money and not doing anything for the communities that they claim to be helping. So why would you support them? I think terms like that are just way too all encompassing and don't allow for any nuance. True. All lives matter, of course. But black, black lives matter as much as any others. When you spend so much time saying that, it makes it sound like nobody else's does. Black lives matter. It's almost like a child when it's like, why can't we all matter? That's not the point of the, it's not the point of the phrase. It's not always about you. I'd be interested to see what she thinks about the organization. Cause I think that this question was more about the statement, but I think she'd have a different take, especially now with everything we know about BLM, the organization. Pro-choice, pro-life. I'm pro-choice. Pro-life. Pro-choice. Pro-choice. Why pro-choice? There should not be anyone telling anyone what to do with their own body. That's where I used to be. I think you guys know that, but I used to be pro-choice, like from a limited government standpoint, because I had the opinion, you know, even though I did not believe that it was right, I didn't think the government needed to step in to do that. And then when I did a little more research, a little more soul searching. I thought about the morality of it a lot more. I realized that I was wrong, that it was more about taking responsibility for your actions and having an innocent life who is the one that faces the consequences rather than the person that brought the consequences to be. I think that changed a lot of things for me, but yeah, I used to be somebody who was right wing and was pro-choice. Last one, give Republicans a compliment. I like the fact that you are very well-spoken and stand for what you believe in. I think that's a really good characteristic to have, it, to be strong-willed in that way. Democrats know how to win. Sometimes Republicans don't. They're very good at motivating their base. True. Republicans have a harder time. We do. Have a very difficult time. You guys have some pretty decent concepts, like being pro-choice. That's a good move. What do you think some Democrats said? They probably struggled on that one. After Trump, we probably pissed a lot of them off. <laughs> that uh, is putting it mildly for sure. But again, it's like these videos, they'll piss me off sometimes because I'm like, ah, why are you saying that? And like, why did you edit it in this way? But I'm always happy at the end because they force people to come together or they leave it at like, you know, a last image of people laughing and like shaking hands. It's like, they make us out to be so much more divided than we really are. Like there is a way that you can come together. You do not have to like universally hate the other side. You can have some humanity. You can have some empathy. You can compliment them. And well, you know what they said about the Democrats, even though I am somebody who votes Republican, even though the Republican party like is holding me by a string because they're so idiotic. I just kind of, you know, end up falling there. It's like the Democrats are good at what they do. They're very captivating. They are really, really good at reaching young people. Their ideas are very motivating. It's very, very difficult for Republicans, I think, to emotionally ignite their ideas. We struggle creatively for sure. So we also have some pitfalls and you know, just like the left, we also have some extremes that are not great and don't make our party look good. So I think there's like pitfalls to both. But yeah, the media makes us out to <laughs> look a lot worse than I think we both are in many cases. Somebody said, who's gig here? That question came out of left field, but I'm here for it. Really asking the important things. Somebody said, I already know just from the intro that this video is going to give me a headache. Still going to watch it though. Somebody said, I died at the mask scene. I know I was pissed for a minute because I was like, you 
totally got it wrong, but the under the nose, like I can't be upset about that. That was literally me. It's extremely important to have an open dialogue and be able to discuss our opinions exactly. And I'm very, very grateful for those YouTube channels for amplifying those. And it's very, very cool because they've gotten incredibly popular. These videos get millions of views. I think it's important for people to see. He said, remind me, which one burns down cities? Exactly. We can all protest. We all have the right to protest. We do not have the right to tear into cities and ruin people's lives. The one guy who separated the leaders of the Democrats from the actual people is something I wish more people did for every party because the faces of the parties are very different from the common person in the party. Absolutely. And the person said, the extremes of both parties are problematic. Yes. There you go. For better or for worse, even though as I get older, some of the extremes seem more appealing to me. So we'll see what I have to say about that in like 10 years, but I love these videos. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the comment section and that you maybe even learned something new. If you have not already, like this video, subscribe to this channel, and of course, ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode.